Greetings to all of you and God bless you today. I hope everybody's doing well. I wanted to encourage all of you that are waiting and longing for our Lord's soon appearing to rapture the church, that while we are waiting, we still have a job to do and we are to occupy until he comes and that after the rapture of the church, we will all stand before the Bema, the judgment seat of Christ. And that although we are not saved by our works and we are not kept saved by our works, Jesus Christ has called us unto good works. I want to reiterate what's, um, what the Apostle Paul says in Ephesians chapter 2, verse 8 to 10. For by grace are you saved, through faith, and that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus unto good works, which God hath before ordained, that we should walk in them. And also in the book of Titus, chapter 3, verse 5 to 8, the Apostle Paul says, Not by works of righteousness which we have done, but according to his mercy he saved us, by the washing of regeneration and renewing of the Holy Ghost, which he shed on us abundantly through Jesus Christ our Savior, that being justified by his grace, we should be made heirs according to the hope of eternal life. This is a faithful saying, and these things, these things I will that though affirm constantly that they which have believed in God might be careful to maintain good works, these things are good and profitable unto men. So again, Scripture makes it very clear that we are not saved by our works and we are not kept saved by our works, but we are called unto good works. You know, I've used this analogy before and I want to use it again. I played college ice hockey at Penn State University years ago. And I was the captain of my team. And nothing could ever take that away from me. What I mean is I was always part of the team. All right? But I wanted to be the best for my team. Likewise, we are all, when we're saved, we all are part of the body of Christ. But you know, when I played ice hockey, I always wanted to make my coach happy. I wanted to please my coach. But also I wanted to be the best for my teammates. I wanted to encourage them, lift them up. Um, even though we lost games, I still wanted to keep them pumped up. Likewise, again, we are one body in Christ, and we're all part of the team, right? But we want to be the best for our king in this race. You know, the Bible speaks of a special judgment that God will hold for believers only. It is known as the judgment seat of Christ, or the judgment seat of God. In 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 10, the Apostle Paul says, For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ, that everyone may receive the things done in his body according to that he hath done, whether it be good or bad. The judgment seat of Christ is not designed to punish believers, but rather to reward them for their faithful service. All of us will give an account of what we have done after trusting Jesus Christ as Savior. Therefore, the judgment seat of Christ is a judgment of believers' works after salvation. All believers will stand before God and be individually judged. In Romans chapter 14, verse 10, the Apostle Paul says, But why dost thou judge thy brother? Or why dost thou set it not thy brother? For we shall all stand before the judgment seat of Christ. As sometime in the future, the Lord will come back for those who have believed upon him at the rapture of the church. He will change their bodies from corruptible to incorruptible. After this event, the rapture of the church, those believers will go to the judgment seat of Christ. Judgment always comes after, resur as after resurrection. Again, this is not a judgment to determine who will enter heaven. The sins of believers will not be an issue at the judgment seat of Christ. They have already been forgiven. Again, the purpose of the judgment seat of Christ is not to punish believers, but to reward them for their faithful service. So let's talk about the Bema seat. Again, the judgment seat of Christ is known as the Bema. The word is also translated court or tribunal. The Bema is a tribunal for rewards. In the large Olympic arenas, there was an elevated seat on which the judge of the contest sat. After the contests were over, the successful competitors would assemble before the Bema to receive their rewards or crowns.
The Bema was not a judicial bench where someone was condemned. It was a reward seat. Likewise, the judgment seat of Christ is not a judicial bench. The Christian life is a race, and the divine umpire is Jesus Christ. After the race is over for each believer, he will gather every member before the Bema for the purpose of examining each one and giving the proper reward to each. At the Bema, the judgment seat of Christ, after the rapture of the church, the rewards believers will receive are called crowns. The New Testament highlights five special crowns for the believers. Again, when you read through the New Testament, you will see these five Christian crowns. You have the crown of righteousness, the crown of life, the crown of glory, the incorruptible crown, and the crown of rejoicing. Let's look at one of the crowns. First, we're going to look at the crown of glory, which you can find in the book of 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 4. 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 4. And when the chief shepherd shall appear, he shall receive a crown of glory that fadeth not away. Those who have served Jesus Christ as elders and pastors in the church will receive their reward from God. Though they have often given thanklessly of their time and resources here, in heaven they shall receive a crown of glory. Let's look at the second crown I want to talk about here. The crown of rejoicing, also known as the soul winner's crown. You'll find this crown in 1 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 19, where the Apostle Paul says, For what is our hope, or joy, or crown of rejoicing? Are not even ye in the presence of our Lord Jesus Christ at his coming? Those who have won others to faith in Jesus Christ as their Savior will experience joy because these new believers are their spiritual children. Because others have been converted under their ministry, they are promised this special reward in heaven. Again, this, that's the crown of rejoicing, the soul winner's crown. Let's look at the third crown I want to talk about right now. Also known, it's known as the crown of righteousness for those who love his appearing. You can find the crown of righteousness in 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 8, where the Apostle Paul says, Henceforth there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give me at that day, and not to me only, but unto all them also that love his appearing. This crown will be given to all believers who long for the return of Jesus Christ. Throughout the New Testament, Christians are reminded to be watchful for the imminent return of their Lord. We must live active, vital lives as though we have a hundred years until he returns, while at the same time live in anticipation and holiness as though he will return today. So if you're longing for your king, if you're watching for his, that soon return, looking for the blessed hope, you're not crazy. I know you may feel crazy and those around you may make you feel crazy for watching the signs of the time and expecting him each and every day. But you're told if you're longing for his appearing, if you're loving his appearing, you're going to get this crown of righteousness. Wow. All right. Let's look at the fourth crown I want to talk about, the incorruptible crown, which is for victorious lives of purity. You'll find this crown in 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 25, where the Apostle Paul says, And every man that striveth for the mastery is temperate in all things. Now they do it to obtain a corruptible crown, but we an incorruptible. Christians who are victorious in their daily spiritual struggle will receive an incorruptible crown. Wow. Let's look at the fifth and final crown I want to talk about that the New Testament highlights. And that is the crown of life. This is for Christian martyrs. You will find this crown in Revelation chapter 2, verse 10. Fear none of those things which, shall, which, thou, shalt, which thou shalt suffer. Excuse me. Behold, the devil shall cast some of you into prison, that ye may be tried, and ye shall have tribulation ten days. Be though faithful unto death, and I will give thee a crown of life. Christ promises a crown of life for all of those saints through the ages that have suffered martyrdom for their faith in him. His followers have experienced persecution in every century. Even today, hundreds of thousands of Christians die throughout the world as martyrs for their faith. That's the five crowns I wanted to talk about. Uh, again, that the New Testament highlights. 
Again, this video is not to make any of you doubt your salvation, but rather to encourage you to be about our Father's business more than ever before until that trumpet does sound. Because we will all stand before the judgment seat of Christ. And the purpose of this is not the judgment seat of Christ. The purpose of this is not to punish believers, but to reward them for their faithful service. And I don't know about you, but I want to hear, well done, good and faithful servant. And that's what you should want to hear too. We are ambassadors of Jesus Christ, and our job is not to save anyone. We can't save anybody. But our job is to plant the seeds and to give them the gospel of their salvation, which is highlighted in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 1 to 4, which is Jesus Christ died on the cross for their sins, he was buried, and he rose again. He resurrected on the third day, as it is written in the scriptures. That's our job in this dispensation of grace, the church age. Again, we cannot save anybody. That's not our job. But our job is to point them to Jesus Christ, to tell them that they're sinners in need of a Savior, that they can't save themselves, that Jesus Christ did it all for them on the cross at Calvary by shedding his blood. And we need to tell them that today is a day of salvation. They need to put their faith in their trust right here and right now in the blood of Jesus Christ, believing Jesus Christ took upon himself the sins of the entire world and he paid it with his blood. We were bought with a price and we need to tell people that and tell them Jesus died for their sins, he was buried, and he rose from the dead on the third day as it is written in the scriptures. And we need to tell them that Jesus is coming soon and that he is the only way to the kingdom of heaven. And we need to do it now because although we are not saved by our works and although we are not kept saved by our works, we have a job to do in this dispensation of grace until the trumpet sounds at the appointed time. And when you look around this world right now at everything converging like never before, it shows us that this dispensation of grace, this church age, is closing. It's closing time. The ark door is closing to this dispensation of grace. And my prayer is this video has encouraged you guys that we need to be about our Father's business more than ever before. Because I want to hear, well done, good and faithful servant, and you should too. God bless you.